Hi, welcome to Community Connect. I'm Dennis Threadgill, and here I have with me Melanie Swiftney, author. Hi. So yes. thanks for being on the show yep. with us today. Thank you. Just going to talk a little bit about uh, what you do. Um, so when did you become a writer? So I've been writing my whole life. Um, I tell a lot of people I wrote as a kid. I've always loved telling stories. I especially love seeing people's reactions. That's just the, the best part for me. Even when someone's reading the back of my book, if they have kind of a gasp, I just love that. So I wrote a lot of short stories, poems, you know, angsty songs, that kind of thing in middle school, um, through high school, and had always liked to write, but I also liked art. And when I was getting ready to go into college, I thought the only two career options as a writer were to be an English teacher or a journalist. Mm -hmm. And I very much appreciate people who can do this. I don't like interviewing people. <laughs> so <laughs> I ended up going into graphic design and didn't get back into writing until my mid-30s. And since then have written um, almost nine novels. So wow. I'm working on my ninth now. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what you write. So I write young adult novels. The first two books that I wrote were not. They were more adult contemporary fiction. Um, but I got into young adult and I joke that because I don't have kids of my own, I've just never grown up and still have that teenager mentality. Uh -huh. But um, I really like kind of exploring that idea of first love, figuring out who you are, and that time of your life when just everything is so important. Like, you know, even the, the smallest lights in the hallway at school just crush you, you know. And yeah. I like writing about that and just kind of exploring different ideas and hopefully giving, you know, you like to have a message in your books, but you don't want it to be preachy. So there's a, a careful line you have to do when you're writing for teens. And I just really enjoy that. Good. Um, so tell me a little bit about growing up and libraries and how those affected you. I mean, they have so many things, um, you know, you go there to read, but there's so many other things. And, right. and how did that have an effect on you? So I'm really fortunate. I, my parents have always been avid readers, so I grew up surrounded by books. And yeah, I mean, we, I'd get books out of the library as a kid and just pour through them. I was, you know, I like to play outside. I, I'm one of those uh, as a writer, a lot of people tend to be introverts. I'm one of the oddballs that's an extrovert and also plays sports and does a lot of other things, but I love reading and have always read books. Going to the library and being able to do that, hearing story times, you know, when you're a kid, when people come in and read to you. I always remember that from being in school. I went to Holmes and, you know, having guest people come in and read to you. I think that was just the coolest thing. And now, as an adult, having the library, having that ability to go in. Um, I'm a mentor for a high school student right now, and she needed to be able to use a computer, we were able to go into the library and do that. And so the fact that, you know, they have all these things available to people who maybe don't have a computer at home or don't have books at home, don't have access to that kind of thing, you know, it's, it, like you said, it goes way beyond just mm -hmm. reading, um, but they really are kind of the heart and soul of our community. I've been to countless programs in the downstairs at Lauda Library. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I was there, you know, a couple weeks ago. and. I've, I've presented it there a couple times. I've sold books there a couple times at author events. They have been really supportive uh, as an author by not only carrying our books, but telling people like, hey, this is a local author, you should check her out. And then they have a special section where people can see that. So they are, you know, lauded in particular because I, I work with them, mm -hmm. but you know, libraries are just so valuable for that reason. Good. And how many books have you written? So I've written, well, if we count the memoir that no one will read, I'll say 10. Okay. <laughs> um, I've published six novels, but I've written three, uh, nine, so. Okay, and tell me a little bit about your self-published, mm -hmm. is that correct? So tell me a little bit, how does that differ from having a publisher? So self-publishing versus traditional publishing, a lot of us call it indie publishing as well. Um, with traditional publishing, you typically would get an agent who then sells your book to an editor at a publishing house, and then they handle the bulk of the work for you. And there's a mantra in that world that money only flows to the writer. So you'll hear people get, getting scammed that they'll try to pay for an agent, and like, no, everything be flowing to the writer. With self-publishing, you're doing all the work. Mm -hmm. So you are putting out money up front, whether you're hiring an editor or a cover designer, somebody to format your book, you know, any marketing that you're doing, you're, you're doing that yourself, but you're also getting all the money. So with an agent, they get 15%. The publisher gets a certain percentage. So you, the royalties for an author are much lower with traditional. However, you get an a, um, advance. So you know, there is bigger potential, I think, with traditional because you, your distribution is bigger. You sure. can be, they, they can get you into all the bookstores, mm -hmm. whereas with me, if I contact a bookstore and say, hey, I've got this book, I think you'd love it, they might decide to carry it. But you literally might have to contact every bookstore in the country in order sure. for that to happen. So um, the benefits of self-publishing are that you control everything. If I decide I want to change something real quick, if I want to change the copy that's listed on Amazon for my book, I can do that. If I love this cover, I can do that. Um, okay. I have the added bonus that being a graphic designer, I design my covers, I do my book formatting, mm -hmm. so I really have very minimal cost up front, except for really marketing 
um, is, are the biggest expenses for me. Okay. So. so tell me about the book that you're working on right now and kind of um, the inspiration and how do you get inspired to write? So I can't say too much because I don't want to spoil oh. it, but it's um, a young adult, again, it's a psychological suspense, and the premise is that it's about a girl whose twin sister was kidnapped when they were one month old, and her parents raised her as both girls. So it is kind of a split personality. Uh -huh. There's a lot of there's mental illness going on, a lot of self-identity trying to figure out who she is. Um, I've got the dsm 4 book that lists all the medical maladies you can possibly have so I can make sure that I'm doing everything right. I've interviewed some people. Um, I still have some research ahead of me, but really excited about this. This one's been a little more difficult than some of my other books. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other ones have been a little bit lighter. So. And what about the inspiration? What inspires you? Um, really everything. I, you know, I do school visits. I talk about this and I joke, you know, oh, we have an idea store. We just go there and that's where <laughs> we get our books, our book ideas. But um, really anything around me with this particular story, I just kind of started thinking like, I think I must have read a book about twins recently. And I was like, well, I don't have a twin. So how would I write that? I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. have her be kidnapped. There you go. Okay. No, problem solved. Um, different things I've had, you know, I have a series, a sports romance series, that the first one is with skiing, and I got the idea in 2014 when we were buried under like 100 inches of snow that one mm -hmm. winter, and the Winter Olympics were on, and I'd been watching a lot of that, and I just thought, oh, I'd like to write about a skier, and then I just kind of start thinking, okay, what could happen, and I managed to work in, I moved a lot as a kid, and so I had her moving to a new school, but also, and so kind of figuring out how do you make friends, how do you find your, your group of people, mm -hmm. um, plus having a lot of skiing and that kind of thing. And how long does it typically take you to write a novel? So I vary. I've done a couple novels. There's something called National Novel Writing Month in November, um, NaNoWriMo. And the challenge is to write a novel in a month. Mm -hmm. So I've completed that successfully a couple times. But that's usually, I think that was when I wasn't working. So um, <laughs> Things that are makes, a, when you makes it a little bit easier. Sure. Um, typically, I've done a couple novels in two months, and then six months kind of seems to be the long end. So this one that I'm doing right now will be about six months. I'm hoping to finish by the end of this month. Um, so two to six months for a first okay. draft. Now, then I do four to five rounds of edits that involve other people reading the book, you mm -hmm. know, commenting, making changes, plus my own edits. And so for a finished book, um, on the safe side, we'll say a year, but sometimes nine months. Okay. Yeah. And what can you say to, um, like, uh, somebody who want, thinks they might be a writer? Right. <laughs> so really, that's the easiest thing. I, you know, I, I meet so many people that say, oh, I want to write a book. Oh, if I had time. I said, you know, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about prioritizing the time of what you want to do. Granted, if you have small children, if you have two jobs, if you're taking care of a sick parent, there's so many reasons that can definitely make it more difficult. So I say make your goal really low. The first book that I wrote, my daily goal was 100 words. That's like a paragraph, you know. So yeah. really, the hardest part is just sitting down and doing it. So but think about it in small chunks. Exactly. Like, like I love the analogy of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Uh -huh. You know, you have to start somewhere, and I, I can get overwhelmed just as easily as the next person. So if you set yourself a really low goal, but the other thing is, you know, you really just have to want to do it. Don't wait for the perfect time. Just decide you're going to. And whenever I meet somebody that's like, oh, I used to write, but I've fallen out of it. They're like, I'm like yeah, you need to start writing again. Uh -huh. And I'm currently messaging with a friend on Instagram who just started a novel recently, okay. so he keeps sending me screenshots. I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's so exciting. Um, but another good, uh, you know, so my main advice is to just do it, but mm -hmm. another one is to find writing friends. Um, I have a huge network of writing friends online who I've met first through a writing forum and now mostly on Facebook, and they really help you get through when you start doubting yourself, when you get stuck in a plot idea. I mean, because writing's very solitary, sure. so having somebody else to kind of commiserate some ideas off, <laughs> and of and, ideas off okay. you know really helps okay very good yeah. well thanks for being on the show we're out You're of time welcome. Yeah. Um, but appreciate you being here and taking the time out of your day yep thank you All so right. much thank you so much yep. thank you for watching a community connect we'll see you next time quality and craftsmanship are at the heart of every sweet we craft guaranteeing each tempting treat delights the taste buds and gratifies the soul sweet temptations homemade indulgences that instantly delight and ignite your senses so whether you need an exceptional gift for someone special or just want to treat yourself, step into Sweet Temptations today and experience the taste of pure bliss. 621 Miller Drive in Grand Haven or at sweet-temptations.com.